Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your love today that we sense in this place. Lord, thank you for the tangible anointing that's in this place that's on the lives of your people. Some of us sense that right now, Lord. We receive from that. We draw from that. We yield to the Holy Ghost. 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 (laughs) Come Holy Spirit. 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 Spirit. Fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place with the tangible anointing right now, Lord. I'm asking you to fill this place with the tangible glory in this place, Lord. The manifestation of your glory, Lord. I thank you for the light. I thank you for the fire. I thank you for the glory. I thank you for the shaking. I thank you for the new wine. I thank you for counsel. I thank you for glory. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for knowledge in the things of God today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm today. I am today. I say this today. I am today walking in the light that Peter walked in. That anointing, that realm that Peter walked in. I feel that tangibly on me today. The Lord has given me some instruction today on what to do with that. But, but uh, uh, it requires people coming to the Lord in faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. The whole thing is, is we are victorious now. We don't wait. We have it now. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. For those that go to God have to go to Him in faith, believing that what He said, He'll do. And then it says that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. What's that? Seeking His Word, seeking His Word, seeking His Word, seeking His Word, doing the Word, being the Word, eating the Word, living the Word, drinking the Word, having the Word, living by faith. That's how you make it. And you don't barely... Look, I guarantee you that we're not going to see anybody in heaven come sliding in like they're sliding into home plate. Barely making it. You're either going to make it in grand and glorious style or you're not going to make it. Look, I'm here to tell you right now, by the Spirit of God, get your eyes off the world. Get your guys, get your eyes off the world realm. Get your eyes off all the nonsense and the junk that's going on and get your eyes in heaven. Because when you get into heaven, then you'll see how to pray for the world. Instead of complaining about the world. And I will, Lord, and He's speaking to me just like He's speaking to you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you that we are a peculiar people, God. That we're not like mainstream religion. I don't want any religion in this church, ever. And every devil that's in here trying to mess with you, I command him to go in the name of Jesus. Right now. God has come to bring delivering power today. Some of you have been stuck in a rut. And you've been asking for help. You've been crying for help. And you're going to get help today. And you're going to be pulled out of that rut today. The Bible says that He will pull His people out of the pit. He's rescued us out of the pit. He's rescued us out of the trap. He's pulled us out. The Bible says He'll do that. Some of you have been standing and standing and standing and standing, and standing, and I believe today, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, see, you can't come to church just wanting to hear what you feel like hearing. You can't come to church with your own mind trying to perceive what the things of God are saying. You've got to get into the Spirit. Dad said it earlier. Tim said it earlier when he was leading praise and worship. It's time to ascend into heaven. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me before Tim said that, before Dad said that, so I know we're all on the same page here, and a lot, a lot of you probably heard some of this, something similar, but I heard the Lord say, what's going on in heaven needs to go on down here. <laughs> 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 
Listen, I'm telling you right now that our eyes need to be on the things that are in the heavenlies. What is God doing in the spirit realm? What is He saying to us in the spirit realm? What is He doing to our neighbors, our friends, our families? What is He doing in the body of Christ? We need to see in the spirit realm. We can't perceive any of this stuff that I'm going to talk about today or that the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to us today. We can't re- perceive it with our minds. We've got to receive it in our hearts. And we've got to believe by faith that we are who God says we are. Not what our mom said, our dad said, our grandpa said, our grandma said, our aunt said, even our teacher said, or our coach said. We've got to hear what God says, who we are. That's who you are. That's who we are. I, I, I believe, and if you're going to do something, do it right. I believe if you're going to do something, give it 100%. I never went out on the baseball field giving 50%. I went out on the baseball field wanting to dominate and win at all costs. That was my mindset. And that is my mindset today with the things of God. I want God to to show up so strong and reveal Himself so strong to everybody that's around me that they will come to their knees and give their life to Jesus Christ. That the harvest will come in. That they'll sense the healing power. They'll sense the love of God. They'll sense the light of God. That is my goal. That is what I ask the Lord every day. Lord, some people just need to know that You're there. Come upon them, God. Holy Spirit does move gently like a river sometimes. I was by the Merced River yesterday. He, the river was just, it was moving. It looked like it, looked like it wasn't no big deal, like you can get out in it, it would be no big deal, but, but, but the current was strong. But it was gentle and peaceful looking as I stood there and looked at that. The Holy Spirit will move gently. The Holy Spirit will move strongly. The Holy Spirit will shake you and bake you. The Holy Spirit will sometimes wring you out like a wet rag. The Holy Spirit can move any way He wants to move. And what I'm saying today is we need to learn, and I know a lot of us in here are veterans, and we get an understanding, and there's some folks in here that are still learning, and, and I'm still learning, and all that good stuff. But we need to... Start asking the Lord, make us sensitive to the things of God. But by you doing that, He's going to require of you to get your eyes off certain things. Because your heart's being calloused. He's going to teach you how to keep your mouth shut. And not curse people. He's going to teach you how to, because this is all the school that I've been going to for a while. So, if you want to join me in class, feel free. There's room. <laughs> but he, you want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then you've got to be... If you want to learn how the Holy Spirit moves, then you've got to obey God and go through school with God. Right. About yourself. Yeah. And what needs to be delivered out of you and, and, and where you need help in your life so you can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I've noticed, and I've been around for a while, and I've been around a lot of people, and I've noticed the people that really, really flow in the acts of God and really flow strongly in the things of the Lord, uh, a lot of them have a very, very, very strong love walk. And number two, they spend a lot of time with the Father. That's what I'm learning to do. I'm learning to spend a lot of time with the Father because um, I know that there's some things that He wants me to accomplish while I'm here on earth. And the whole thing is, is it's not about me, it's about everybody in this place. He has a lot of things He wants you to accomplish, very powerful things. Some of you are going to come running in here one day, guess what? I raised this dude from the dead, it was awesome! He was dead, but he's alive. Oh, I don't believe that. That's the problem. Really? The Bible says you can raise people from the dead. You don't go to the morgue and just, okay, I'm going to practice. You don't do that. They'll throw you in jail. And God will be like, I didn't tell you to do that, you know. A gift of faith will come on you to do it when it's time needed. If that's needed. 
Some might never do that. Some might do that. But be open to it. Well, how can I be open to that? Because God said you can. We can read in the Scripture. It's plain. Come here, Brother Steve. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I've been wanting to hug you for a while, man. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Heal the cancer. Amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love. I just read that scripture this morning that that affliction will not come back a second time. Amen. I declare that. Yes, sir. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I love that anointing. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Glory. Now listen. Here, let me back up. Now listen to this. There was many of us in here standing with you. Whoever was standing with Steve, stand up right now that was praying for him. Stand up right now. Just be honest. During this ordeal, you pray. Now, just be, if you sit down, it's okay. It doesn't mean you didn't pray for him or you don't love him or whatever. That's fine. Some of us might not even have even known that he was going through cancer. But we stood and we prayed. We declared the word of the Lord. And he's healed. No cancer. It's all gone. It's over with. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Seemed like you were in that valley for a while, but the, the the prayers of the saints. I understand that. Amen. Amen. It's a valley sometimes, but the prayers of the saints held you, kept you. Thank you. Amen. And believe me, it wasn't me. No. <laughs> no. I, I know your faith was there. You believe no, the word. Not exactly. No. But the, the prayers of the saints. Yeah. Helps you. Did you sense that thank when we were everybody. when we were praying? Yeah. I thank you guys. Yep. You're my family. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I thank you for that. We give you praise for your miracle healing working power that worked in Steve. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ that he'll be stronger than ever. More anointing, devil! <laughs> More anointing! More power! Shukuba Bahasa. More glory in his life. You'll be used like never before because the devil is a liar. He tried to kill you and take you out. But now you'll rise as a king. You'll rise as a king to your generation. You'll rise as a king to the younger generation. You'll rise as a king to the older generation. And your glory will be seen. The glory of God will be seen upon you. The glory of God will be seen upon you. And many will come. Many will come. Many will come and give their life. Hallelujah. Because of the glory. Because of the glory and the faithfulness that you have. <laughs> thank you, Father. Yes. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for a stirring in my brother from this day forward, even more than ever before, Lord. That yes. stirring's been yes, there, God, but more, come on. Lord. Come on. Come on. More, 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 more dreams, more visions, yeah. more miracles through his fingertips. Mm. The devil turned the heat up, but God put it out. Just like those three children boys, <laughs> those three yeah. Hebrew boys, Hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> the devil tried to kill them, but God brought them up and used them for His Hallelujah. glory. Hallelujah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So from yes, this yes. day forward, you walk out the Amen. plan and the Hallelujah. purpose that God Hallelujah. has for Hallelujah. your life. Glory to God. And this thing will not come back a Amen. second time in Jesus' name. You Amen. believe that? Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise Huh? Amen. I'm going to die of natural causes. That's yeah. it. That's it. Amen. You're going to die of old age. <laughs> Amen. 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 Love you, Brother Steve. Praise the Lord. I had to do that, man. Thank God. Anybody else ever been healed in here of cancer before? Lift your hand. Anybody else? Yeah, that's true. That's right. You were healed. You were, I, it's just, yeah, brother, I knew Brother Royce. Yeah. Glory to God. 
Gary, you too? Come on, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, I hate the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Turn over to Acts chapter 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is so good to us, man. Thank you, Lord. Just think about everything He's done for your life, man. How He's always provided and taken care of. How He's speaking to our children, our grandchildren. How He's loving on us. Man, I'm just thankful for that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 12. <clears throat> it says, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly. Verse 14. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Now that word shadow there means a luminous cloud. It means full of or shedding light bright shining in the dark. There was a luminous cloud on Peter. Now let me say this. We are as believers, now we should be as believers looking for people to bless. Yes, that's right. We should. Because it's really not about us. It's about God and it's about others. That anointing that's on your life, that gift coach that's in you coach, that gift that you have, it's not just for you, but for other people. That gift that's in you, Clarence, that gift that's in you, you know, Carol, that gift that's in you, it's not for just you, it's for others. Amen. So we should be, as believers, looking for people to bless. Now, here's the deal. We are, as believers, hopefully looking for miracles, we're looking for signs, we're looking for wonders, we're looking for, like I said, uh, a people that we can go and minister to and love on and bless and help but in the same aspect, we need to not just be looking for those things. We need to make sure that we, as a believer, as an individual in the body of Christ, that we have, number one, relationship with the Father, and number two, we know the Father's Word. Now, we, we know that the Holy Spirit will intervene. We know the Holy Spirit will give us boldness. We know the Holy Spirit will speak through us. I mean, there's even been times that a lot of us in here, probably more than once, where we've been talking with someone, and all of a sudden we start talking about Scripture, and we're thinking on the inside, man, I never even knew about that Scripture, you know? The Holy Spirit reveals things to us. He gives us revelation. He gives us knowledge. But that doesn't mean we just go out and just try to do stuff. We've got to know the Word before we can go out and actually do some stuff. Amen. We've got to know. You've got to know if you come across a devil and he tries to attack you, you better know how to cast it out. Right. Thank you, Allison. Fixing my shirt. What are daughters for, right? Amen. We've got to know that if somebody comes up to us and says, um, how do I get filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, hold on a minute. Let me call Pastor. I know I got his number in my phone here. Because you know what I'm going to say? No, you do it. We've got to know the Word of God. We've got to know the Word of God. Someone comes up to us, well, how do I get healed? We need to know how to walk them and pray for them and take them through steps and release revelation that God's given us that's in His Word. We've got to know how to release that to others so they can be healed and receive. So what I'm saying is, all these things are awesome. God used the apostles. He used them. But the thing is, is they knew 
the Word. They knew from Jesus how to take care of business. They knew how to cast out devils. They knew how to, how to heal the sick. They knew how to speak the Word. And they were learning how to listen to the Holy Ghost. That's what this book's about here at the beginning of it, about how the Holy Ghost came into the upper room. They were filled with, with tongues, each tongues of fire set upon their head. They all spoke in tongues by the entrance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we know those scriptures there. But the thing is, is they were having to learn what is the Holy Ghost and who is the Holy Ghost. And all they could take from who is the Holy Ghost and what is the Holy Ghost is when Jesus, before He ascended, He said, I'm not going to leave you an orphan. I'm not leaving you alone. I'm sending the Comforter, the Counselor. He's going to come, the Holy Spirit. He's going to come and He's going to fill you with His fire. He's going to fill you with His power. He's going to fill you with His knowledge, His wisdom. So it would be smart of us if we got up every day and said, Come Holy Spirit, fill me with your knowledge today because I need to know what I'm doing. Holy Spirit, I'm open to you today. I'm available to you today. Use me to say whatever you want. Use me to go wherever you want me to go. Use me to do whatever you want me to do, Holy Spirit. I'm available. That's the attitude Peter and these apostles and these guys had. They grabbed a hold of what Jesus said. They saw what happened in Acts chapter 2. They saw... Peter get up and preach the gospel and they saw all kinds of people come and give their lives to Christ and get saved and then out of that out of that group there out of that out of that uh, uh, those people there people rose up and spread out and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ with signs and demonstration following come on guys hallelujah so it's not just about reading these awesome stories and saying, Woo, that's good. That's it. Be a part of these stories. You guys have so much power in you. Just yield to it daily. So here I am. Believe God. That you're like Peter and that luminous cloud is following you everywhere you go. Believe that. Well, I just don't feel worthy. It ain't about feeling. It's about who you are. The greater one is on the inside of you. Now listen, I'm preaching to myself today too because look, I'll tell you right now that the devil will try to get you to believe that all this stuff is just, that's unreachable. You're this, or you're that, or, or there's no way, or man, you must have ate too much spaghetti and pizza before you went to bed last night. You know, those dreams, that's, that's just unbelievable. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm learning, and I've been learning since the beginning of the year. I'm learning that you have dreams for a purpose. Not all of them are God dreams, but a lot of them are. And some of you right now, you're thinking about that dream that you just had. A few of them that's stirring on the inside of you. Or that person that God has brought across your face to pray for and you don't even know them. Share an example. About 10 years ago, maybe a little less, I was standing in my garage doing laundry. Yes, I do laundry. So what? What about it? My clothes are clean all the time. And I never stink. Praise God. I was standing in my garage doing laundry. And I'm standing there and I'm putting stuff in the washing machine. And all of a sudden, I saw this... this uh, uh, this he- a lead singer in a, in, a, in a punk rock band. I like punk rock. Sorry, if you don't like it, that's okay. But I've always been a punk rock fan, so I just, it's me, okay? Well, you shouldn't do that. Well, sorry. But anyways, <laughs> all of a sudden, this, this famous musician, and if I named his name, some of you would know, and if I named the band, a lot of you would probably know, but none of your business. So anyways, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All of a sudden, this guy appears before my face. I wasn't listening to him or anything. I was just standing there. And all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, pray for him. 
And um, I started to pray for this guy. Lord, I'm just asking you to send people across this pathway, Lord, to minister to him. Lord, let him come to know who you are. Let him come to know your love, Father. You know, just thank you for delivering him and helping him. And I began to pray for this guy. This has been about 10 years ago. And through the years, he would come up before me and, and I'd hear some of his music or I would hear a song or something like that. And he, or I'd see it or something like that. And he'd come up before me and I'd just begin to pray for him again. This morning I'm sitting in my living room before service, getting ready for service this morning. I'm sitting there and I come across a word that uh, another minister had, had given here a couple days ago. And actually he sent the email to me. So it's pretty cool. It's in my email, personal email. And I opened this word up and this word's about talking about God's been, and he's, and he's covering, he's not just sending it to me personally, he's sending it to, to other people as well, okay? So it said in this word, it said that, he said that the Lord had been showing him that God has been bringing famous people, uh, like in Hollywood or in the music industry, or people that are out there that are famous or well-known because of whatever, that he's been bringing, uh, putting people in your heart for years now, keep speaking over those people because the time is now. And see, before, 10 years ago, when I started to pray for this guy, there was those thoughts, underlying thoughts on the inside of me, like, Pfft. And here's what I felt like the Lord said to me that day he gave me. And I didn't add this, and I didn't share this with you. I'll share it with you right now, though. He said, you're going to meet him someday and get to share the gospel with him. And see, I hear that, and immediately I'm like, what? How am I going to meet this guy? I don't know where he lives. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is his music. I don't know anything about I I don't know. He doesn't, you know. But see, I believe now it's time for the stuff of this stuff to resurrect in some of your guys' lives. Because he's shown you things. He's said things to some of you. He's given you dreams about some of this kind of stuff. Maybe even about your relatives or something like that in the past where you saw yourself ministering to a certain person. You need to start thanking the Lord for that and going after that and believing God that that's going to happen. It's time now for some of these dreams and some of these things that have happened to start coming to pass. And what I'm saying to you, is don't let don't don't underestimate yourself you have the power and the anointing of God the wisdom of God on the inside of you and you have the authority by the name of Jesus Christ to be what God has called you to be and if he's given you dreams he said things to you it's time for you to grab back a hold of those if you let them go it's time for you to grab a hold of those things and stand firm in the faith of God and that what he said, what he showed you, that it's going to come to pass and you will be used for his glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's time for the church to grab a hold of what God has been showing them. Don't let go. Some of you are to be successful business people for the glory of God. Some of you are successful business people right now in this place and you give God all the glory. That's why you're who you are. I'll just be honest with you, and I'm going to put this guy on the spotlight right now, and he, I hope he doesn't get mad at me. But Brother Andy, Brother Andy owns Shoe Shack here in Madeira. And we do business with Andy. And when I go in there, and I'm not just saying this because he's my shoe guy. And he's got awesome shoes. Y'all need to go over there and buy shoes. Give your money to a Christian man and support his business. That's how I look at it. But when I go into that store, I'm full aware that when I go in there, the presence of God is going to be in that place. And there's a peace in that store unlike others. Because he's a man of God. And he loves people. And you can see that yeah. on him. It's very apparent when you walk into that place. And I guarantee you, because I've watched him deal with other people while I'm in there, he treats those people just like he treats me. Yeah. With a servant's heart. Yeah. But see, what I'm saying is, God is raising people up to just, and, and just because you're in a business or you work at a certain job or you have something like that and you've got to perform your duties and do your duties, but more than that, you have the actual glory of the Lord, the power of God, the blood of Jesus living on the inside of you wherever you're at. It's there. 
And whether you believe this or not, which I'm sure a lot of us believe this, it is showing out of you while you're in that site, that work site, that place, wherever you're at. It's, it's showing out of you. People see it. <sighs> and see, the thing is, is these dreams, these visions, these words from the Lord, you know, driving your car down the road, and you all of a sudden you hear the voice of the Lord, or this thought comes to you about blessing somebody, or about turn down this road, or something like that, or God might show you something about your kids for the future, or your grandkids, or your relatives, or your friends. He might do that. Well, listen, that isn't just, it's, it's, listen, I'll just be honest with you. More than likely, it's not just you. That's what I'm trying to get over to you today. And here's the deal. If you ask God, God, what is that? God will answer you. And He'll tell you if it's too much round table pizza, or He'll tell you that was me. You know what I mean? Usually you don't have to ask, I understand. But sometimes I do. I'm not as spiritually up there as you yet, but I'm getting there. Eat too, you're right, I do eat too much pizza. It shows too. I'll eat any kind of pizza. Bring it on! Pizza party. <laughs> Let's go after church. You're buying where I'm going. Glory. But, uh... <clears throat> Hey Amen. Tammy said she's buying everybody. We're all going around the table. Woo! <laughs> by faith, you'll buy it, right? You'll write that check by faith. Just kidding. All right. Yeah, that's it. Here's the deal, though. We've th- those things that God is sharing with a lot of us. Listen, they are for His glory. And some of that stuff that's been stirring in you lately, man, these dreams, different things like that, man. You know, I know that there's, there's a time God will show, maybe, maybe God will show you something and it's not time yet. Right. You know, you'll know that. Yeah. Because there won't be peace if you're trying to dredge through it and get it, push it and get it going. Yeah. When God shows you something, it usually, when the time comes, it just falls in your lap. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go, Lord. Or, okay, yeah, it's time now. And you'll know it. See, as, a, as, a, as, as leadership here, as, as me and dad and mom, you know, we pray about this stuff and, and we pray about how, how this ministry needs to go and what does God want to do? What's, what's the future of this? And, and how is this going to happen? You know, and there's a lot of awesome ideas that me and dad come up with. Huh. Many times we've sat in that office and said, man, we could do this, or we've been at staff meeting. Man, we could do this, and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And then it's like, we kind of chew on it for a couple of days. It's kind of like, eh. It's just not there yet. But I mean, in our minds, they're like, woo! It's like, yes. This would be all, you know, and, all, and then it's just kind of like, eh. It's not time yet. For certain things. And we know it. I believe that this ministry, the group of people that we have, the people that we have here, you here today, some of you are new and that's understandable, so it might not make sense to what I'm about to say, but a lot of us have been coming here for a long time. And what I believe really has been happening the last 20 years or so is God has been training and raising all of us up for this end time harvest. And when people start flooding in, when we go out and start bringing people in, when, people, when things start happening, when, when all the signs and the wonders that really do attract people, they do. Yes. 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 And God will use that to heal people, bless people, bring them over into His kingdom. God will use those things to happen. The Bible even says some will be saved by fear. That was the only way they could be saved. But when those things start happening... The brunt of that isn't going to be on me, isn't going to be on dad, it's going to be on all of us, and we're all going to play our part and do what God's called us to do. That's what I believe. This church is a hospital. There will be many sick, many people that need deliverance, many people that need healing will come in. And let me tell you something, I was one of those people that came to this hospital, got healed, got delivered out of my mind, all kinds of dumb, goofy stuff, not walking in love, all kinds of demonic stuff. I've been healed because I came to this hospital. And I'm a pastor. I 
I praise God for the other fellowships in this church or this town. I believe God. I pray that God uses them for their purpose here in this region, their purpose here in this town. But I know what God has said about this ministry, and I'm going to do what God has said about this ministry. And I'm going to stay on that. And I'm going to follow it through. And we get to hold hands together as family. Those of you that are called here to be in this ministry and be a part of this, we're working together and for one thing, and that is to bring in the harvest. It's shifted now. Where it's harvest season now. God spoke that to me in January. My own deal. He laid me on the floor right here and wrung me out like a wet rag and started talking to me about this church has shifted now, this ministry, and it's time for harvest. It's time for us to go out and reap souls. And even if the person never even comes to this building ever, not even one time for any service, any Bible study, anything, it doesn't matter. It's time to go get the harvest. That's, what it's, that's, that's the time for this ministry. Can't speak for anybody else, but that's what God's been saying. So I'm saying to you today, be aware, know the word, understand things, get involved with what God is saying, act on those dreams, act on those visions, those words that God has been saying to you. Start believing God that they're going to come to pass. Start believing God that He showed you that for a reason. And sometimes, and I think a lot of the times, really, you'll need to pray into those things. You'll need to ask God, why are you saying this to me? Why did you show me this? What is it? And, and seek Him, seek Him, seek Him until you know why He did what He did to you. God rewards those, Hebrews 11, God rewards those who diligently seek Him. What does He reward you with? He rewards you with everything that He is and has. Because He loves us. His great love. Praise God. So it says here, let's, let's look at, let's look at uh, verse 14 again. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were healed. Back in the late 90s, I wrote this in my Bible underneath that. It's happening in Madeira in the name of Jesus. And I've been standing on that and believing that. And I've been speaking that. And God spoke to me when I read these verses one time. And I'm going to speak this to you because I believe He'll speak the same thing He spoke to me. He'll speak to you. And He's probably already been speaking this to you. But we read these scriptures here. The Lord spoke to me and He said, Mike, think big. Think big. Think big on what God has called you to do. Think big about it. Not just, oh, oh you know. I'm just over here in the corner, and God's going to give me a little cottage in the land of glory somewhere. <laughs> I've heard people say, well, you know, Jesus was poor, so we ought not think too much. Jesus was the richest man on the face of the earth. That, 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 that word rich there, we, we hear the word rich and we think, oh, millions and, you know, a house in Palm Springs and a house in Florida and a house in, you know, wherever. That's not even what I'm talking about. That word rich there means full supply from God, abundant provision from God. That's what that means. All needs met. Everything met. Everything you need Everything He has for you, if you'll just follow Him, love Him, worship Him, praise Him, be about the Father's business like Jesus was, you'll have full provision. He'll provide the way. He'll make a way where the devil says there is no way. He'll make a way when the doctor says you're dead. He'll make a way when they try to throw Jesus off the cliff. And he just turned around and walked right through the middle of them. Well, that was Jesus. Who's in you? Right. Ask yourself that. Yeah. I'm excited today, man. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's the, it is the truth. This is the truth. Amen. Not because I said it, but because the Word says it. Everything I've said in here, you can find Scripture about it. 
So, it says that many were healed, unclean spirits came out of them. Look at verse 29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Let me add this. Let me, let me say this. How can you obey God, though? That's the thing. The only way you can obey God is if you have a relationship with God. You ought to hashtag that one. Hashtag, the only way you can obey God is if you have a relationship with God. That's a hashtag right there. <laughs> Some hashtag, what is that? Some kind of soup? <laughs> you make a note. Amen. The only way you can obey God is if you have a relationship with Him. It's true. Verse 32. And we are His witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. I wrote this down in my Bible. This is how we need to walk in these last days. We need to obey Him. Amen. Obey Him. Amen. Obey Him, man. And I would encourage you, every morning, I would encourage you every morning to get up. And when you find some time in the morning, say, Lord, I want a drink of your new wine today. The best thing you can do when you wake up and the devil's trying to attack your mind in the morning is to start drink and start to laugh. Get drunk and forget about it. Drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hashtag get drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The new wine. Praise God. Glory. Now, here's another tip. Now let me give you another tip. This helps me. This is what I do. Or I'm serious. See, the devil will pervert everything that God's already done. He perverts it. Fear is, fear is opposite of faith. Right? It's hard to be in faith when you're in fear. Right? Okay, so what I like to do is, there's a man by the name of Kenneth E. Hagan. Some of you ever heard of him before? I like to get on YouTube, and there's a bunch of his old sermons on there from when he was preaching. And a lot of them that I like to watch is when the Holy Spirit's fallen in the service. And people are getting drunk and filled with the Holy Ghost and the joy. This morning I was watching it. I just laughed and laughed and laughed. Woke everybody up. Didn't care. Just laughed and laughed. The new wine, the glory of the Lord, the presence of God was so strong. And it's good just to flow with that. And that happened 15 years ago. And I sat there. The same Holy Spirit's here. The same new wine's available. The same joy of the Lord. Like Brother Keith preached when he was here a couple weeks ago. That was awesome. That the joy... The strength that we get in us is from the joy of the Lord for us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's the truth. The devil wants to remind you of what you've done or what you said. You remind him of what the blood has done. <laughs> That's it. The devil perverted drunkenness. A lot of other stuff, yeah, absolutely. Whew, Lord, just let us drink, man, from that, Lord, that well of wine. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> I'll tell you, guys, we are victorious. See yourself in Christ. See Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. 
He loves us. And everything that's affecting your physical body right now does not have to be there and stay. You speak to your life. You speak to your own blood. You speak to your own nerves. You speak to your own organs. You speak to your life. You speak to it. Don't buy into the lie of the enemy that because you get old, you're going to get sick and you're going to die. That's what the world believes. You believe what God has said. The inward man is renewed day by day. The outward man does perish. We are all going to die unless Jesus comes back. That's just a fact. But how are you going to die? In the health and glory of God? I realize sometimes things happen. People leave. People die. Things happen. People die sick. Things happen. But let me tell you something. We don't know what that person said to God before they went on home. God will permit people to come on home if they want to come home. Some people would just rather go on. I was in a hospital room here about four years ago. Out of, a, a, a person that none, no one in here even knows. I was in this hospital room out of town. And I was with another pastor. And this pastor had asked me, I had been, I'd been up at this, uh, this, this man's church that day. It was a Sunday, I'd ministered there. And he asked me, because I'd noticed one of the members in the congregation wasn't there that was, had been there forever. He's one of his, it was his head usher and this and that. And I had wondered where he was at. And after service, I said, where's so-and-so? And he said, oh, he's over in the hospital. And would you, would you want to go over with me? I'm going to go see him. We can pray for him. I said, sure. So I went over to the hospital. And I, I've known this man for a long time. And... Um, he had had cancer in his intestines, and they had done surgery here several years ago and got it all out, and he, he was fine for a good, good while. And then all of a sudden, it came back, and it came back with a vengeance. And I went into this hospital room, and, and this man was in pure pain. And um, when I went in there, I was just standing with this other pastor that I was with, and we were standing there, and we were talking to him. And this pastor asked him, he said, he said, do, do, do you want me to pray for you? And the man said, no, I just want to go on. And the man wasn't old. He was in his early 60s. And the pastor said, no, 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 wait a minute. We'll stand and believe in faith. We'll believe the word. We'll believe that God will heal you. We'll believe. We'll stand with you. Are you sure? No, 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 pastor. I just want to go on. I just want to go on. And we kept, and the pastor kept, no, 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 no. We want to, st- it's not, we feel like, I don't, pastor said, I don't feel like it's time for you to move on. I don't feel like it's, you know, God's got things for you to do. And he just kept saying, hey, I'm okay, I just want to move on. And I kept my mouth shut and I just stood there because it wasn't none of my business. And I just kept my mouth shut and I heard the pastor say this, well, okay, Tom, I'll honor what you want to do. And I'll just pray with you. We prayed for him, and of course, I'm on the inside going, no, 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 why, heaven's awesome, but, you know, I don't know, you know, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you ever been there, and I mean, I don't know, but we prayed for him, and I heard a pastor that I was with, Release him. He said, okay. Because there's nothing he could do about it. By the next morning, he was gone. In the glory. Where a lot of our relatives are at already, where a lot of our friends and family's at. So it doesn't mean that person failed. If you've lost a loved one, it doesn't mean, and they died early because of these, and they knew the Lord, it doesn't mean because they failed. They didn't fail. They're, <laughs> they're there. The ultimate. The Bible says you're right. To die is to gain. Yeah. Brother Hagin used to say, we should weep when people are born and celebrate when people die. Yeah. If they know the Lord. Yeah. Be happy for them. Yeah. They're in glory. They're in our true home. 
So I feel like the Lord has just jumped around a lot today, said a lot of things to us. I'm not your like teacher or or anything like that. Just this is just the way the Lord uses me, and I just go with it. But I pray, and I and I really sincerely say this and mean this. I pray that the Lord spoke to all of our hearts today. Something out of this hit us between the eyes and just blessed us and gave us revelation and knowledge and wisdom about certain things about our lives. Because guys, we truly are the army of the Lord. And we are really taking ground. And we are piercing darkness. And we are overtaking with the light. God is coming back for a glorious church. And He's coming back for a church full of people that love Him. And there is going to be a lot of people that are creating a lot of this havoc right now. And things are going on. A lot of those people are going to come into Christ because if they knew what they were doing now, they wouldn't do it. They're going to get a revelation of Jesus. Jesus will appear or something will take place in their life. And they're going to come over into the kingdom. I promise you. And I believe that. I believe that we're going to see the greatest awakening of souls come to the Lord that we have never seen before. Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, all that stuff is awesome. That was huge. That made a mark on this country. It made a mark on the earth. But we're going to see that on steroids. I believe that. It's another good hashtag. Hallelujah. We're going to see that. And the cool thing is, is we're going to be a part of it. If you want to be, stay yielded to the Holy Spirit. Now, let me ask this question today. Now, listen how I ask this because that's important, okay? Did anybody today come here wanting to have prayer over them for healing for a physical need in your body? If you're here, if it's you, stand up. Okay, anybody come here today wanting prayer in their physical body? All right, good. Okay, now, this one's kind of, man, I don't know. I don't, if I, if I, how do I do that without? So, is there anybody here? I just, I, 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 have, I have a hard time with this because I don't know. Can, can I ask you a question before I say this? Is there anybody here, this is what I heard the Lord say to me. Is there anybody here you came today because you want to be delivered from drugs? Some kind of narcotic, some kind of habit, nicotine, alcohol, drugs, painkillers, something. It all, it's a big span of things. If that's you, just stand up. Because I really believe the Lord wants to deliver folks. Okay, so everybody stand up. Come on up here. I want to lay my hands on you. I'm not going to prolong this. I'm just going to do what God told me to do because I really feel like there's a delivering power in here today. There was a boldness that came upon me this morning because a lot of times um, we just pray for people and we, we mean it and we want the Lord, but sometimes there's certain situations that God will want us to do because He wants to do a specific thing out of those things. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but, but I just really believe that there is an anointing here today for physical healing and for deliverance from some kind of narcotic, drug, something like that. Okay? Now, let me ask this. Who, now, who, who, did anybody up here in front right now respond to the, to the habit, the narcotic, the drug thing? Okay, Izzy. Anybody else up here? You're the only one? You? You? Yeah, okay, 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 all right, okay, it's connected. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is, absolutely. Okay, all right. Thank you, Lord. Just, just, just close your eyes. Just, just, just look to the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when I lay my hands on you, all I simply ask you to do is just to receive from the Lord. Not from me, but from the Lord. And let Him do in your life what needs to be done. Let Him talk to you. Let Him speak to you. Whatever He wants to do. I'm praying in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, 
ministered right now. Start to minister right now, Holy Spirit, to these people right now, their needs, their desires, their cares. Start ministering right now, Holy Spirit. And devil, I tell you in Jesus' name, you loose these people right now in Jesus' name. I command disease, sickness to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command you to loose them, you demonic spirit. Loose now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So Lord, as I lift my hands right now by faith, I thank you for healing right now in Grandma's body in the name of Jesus. That's the anointing right there, Grandma. Just let it flow into you right there. Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. I just feel it pouring out of me right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The fire of God. The joy of the Lord. The strength of God in Grandma's life right now. Commander, joints to be healed and soothed by the anointing right now. The healing balm flow from heaven right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the strength of the Lord in the name of Jesus. <laughs> strength in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Healed. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. name. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Pain loose. Healing come right now. Command your body to line up by the word of God. Thank you for the precious promises and stills life right now, Father, in Jesus' name. What's laying on a hands? Laying on a hands is just a point of contact. I don't want to mess your hair up. Father, in Jesus' name. Mm. Glory, the breath of God. Let it blow. Let it restore. Let it heal. Let it cleanse. Let it deliver right now in Jesus' name. Now, without getting into depth, God is going to restore in your life some wounds from childhood. You will be delivered now in Jesus' name. You'll never be the same. Deliverance, healing, glory, victory, power in Jesus' name over Karen's life right now. In the name of Jesus. No more, devil. No more. Go. Loose my sister now in those areas. Take your hands off. In Jesus' name, you'll see some of that come to fruition. Jesus' name. Be healed right now. 
Shakara bababo, shakara de beste kete. Nothing to fear, nothing to dread. Just keep on being spirit led. <laughs> Woo! That's who you are. You're a ball of joy. Shaka Bahasa. <laughs> See, you used to get drunk and laughing with a lot back in the day. Oh, shaka ba ho ho no ho ho. Well, that's coming back in a glorious way. So yield, 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 yield to that joy. Yield to that laughter. Yield to that glory in Jesus' name. And watch that be a part of your ministry. Oh, shaka bahanda. It'll bring joy and deliverance and healing and freedom and victory to those that are bound. So ha ha ha. So hey hey hey. So he he he. So ho 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 ho. Boom. Man, glory. Hallelujah. I love that kind of stuff. That's all you need is just a laugh. <laughs> Jesus name. Shakabanda. Lord, I ask you right now just to restore afresh in my sister's life right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Lord, I thank you. I just see angels lifting you. I just see the angels of the Lord, your angels that have been assigned to you, just lifting you, ministering to you, loving you, helping you, healing you. And I see the Holy Spirit ministering to you. Obey, just obey. 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 Just obey. Obey in every area. Just obey. Shaka bahandaste. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Your joy is our strength, Lord. <laughs> you need to get drunk more, Sister Dolores. She used to back in the day a lot more. You need to get drunk more again. I used to hear you laugh all the time, and it was a joy. It was good. Shaka bende. I believe that God's bringing that back into the church. A renewing of that. <laughs> if you want to get drunk now, just it's that easy. Yield to it and you'll have it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shokoboso. Shabahando lo bohose kehende le behesi kahando ho ho. Lord, I thank you for alignment right now in Jesus' name. Not just in your body, coach, but alignment in your ministry. And you too. <laughs> and Callie, you, yeah, yeah, Shoboko, you too. Alignment, alignment. God's aligning him. God's aligning things right now. He's aligning it. <clears throat> A divine alignment is happening. Shikabondo la bosake de de beshikida la bondo la bokudi de beke sege in the lema on the usti kiva anda mesta keven de le besake te le bosti zavandombre be. Dad, do you have a word for them? Yeah, then just can you give it? Shakaboho do la bosake. Sibakanda la basa hata le beshtete. Sibakoho. That which would bring worry and that which would bring fear is not even going to be able to come near says the Lord, for you see, I am here. And in order for the enemy to get to you, he's going to have to come through me. And as you stand in my love, then the enemy will have to flee. So do not be afraid. Do not allow him to torment you night and day. But just rise up. Use the sword of the Spirit and say, you take your hands off of me in Jesus name is complete and absolute victory I claim thank you father thank you father thank you Lord. lining thank you Lord there's thank a great Lord. shifting going on in your life right now there's some things that are shifting that you don't even uh, you can't put if God let's just put it this way if the Lord tried to explain it all to us we wouldn't be able to really grab it so there's no sense in him even trying to but yet at the same time, and this is what he wants you to know, he's doing it. 
He's doing it. And he just wants us to understand that he's going to complete it, that the Bible says that what he starts, he finishes. That which he starts, he completes under the day of the Lord. And yeah, so uh, there's going to, you know, at times it's almost like being in a big storm or, you know, a fearful tornado kind of a threatening thing in life in different areas. But God says, don't worry about it. I'm taking care of this. Yes. I'm Holy taking Spirit. care of this, and it's all going to line up my way. That's why the Holy enemy's Spirit. freaking out right now. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. That's why the enemy is going nuts right now. It's mm -hmm. because he knows God's doing something, <laughs> shifting something. And he can't do anything but make a bunch of noise, <laughs> stir up a lot of dust, a lot of fuss and a lot of muss. As the old saying goes, muss and fuss or whatever it is. But he's saying that you are, God is saying that you are right in his will. And the storm's going to blow by, and the sun's going to shine, and everything's going to align, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, right now, Father, whatever it is, meet the need right now. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, some of you all in this place today, God has been talking to you in the recent days about uh, digging deeper in your prayer life. And there's times we don't understand certain things concerning that, but He wants you to start seeking Him about that. What do you mean, Lord, deeper in my prayer life? He'll start showing you what He wants you to do. He wants you to spend more time with Him. You've been sensing that in the recent days really, really strong. Get in it. Obey it. Do it. So whoever that's for in here today, just receive that. That's the word of the Lord. It's confirmation to you. See mountains moving, Joanne. Mountains moving. Mountains moving. Mark 11, 23, 24. That's the scripture you stand on and, and, and speak. I see mountains moving. Shakabanda. Shakabanda. Man, glory. Thank you, God, for the lightning of God. Man, I love that. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Now, let me say this, too. Ooh, glory. Some of you are going to have a generational anointing. A generational anointing. Now, I don't fully know what that means, but when I heard the Lord say that, to me what I heard was through prayer. He's going to use you to pray, and it's going to affect the generations. And what I believe is, of course, God can use a 90-year-old man to affect a 12-year-old. I understand that. But what I believe the Lord showed me as well is that generational prayer thing, He's going to use you as a person in your generation to stand in the gap for your generation. Doesn't mean He won't cross over and deal with younger and old and all that, but He will. But I'm just saying that He wants to use you to pray for your generation, a generational anointing. Jesus' name. <laughs> now let me say this. I've got to let go of you. I'm going to end up falling down myself, which ain't a bad thing, but... Someone in here has been believing God, and I don't want to know who you are. You don't have to lift your hand, come up here, nothing. You've been believing God for a new wardrobe. So receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive a new wardrobe right now. If you want it, receive it. In Jesus' name. Thank you that clothes come to those that need more clothes. That want a fresh wardrobe. Amen. Tired of wearing 1970 clothes, God, from back then. 
They want a freshness in their clothes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Receive it in Jesus' name. Some of you have been asking God for it. Well, there's confirmation. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Deliverance from drugs. Online, okay. She's still online? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll try to get a hold of her somehow, send it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command demonic spirits of drugs, loose her right now in Jesus' name. And I speak freedom, healing, and deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the peace of God right now to flow in my sister's mind right now in Jesus' name. And anybody else on that, that, that right now, that live stream or even the recording of this, be free from that demonic spirit of drugs right now in Jesus' name. Let the power of God, Lord, hit them right now. Touch them. Set them free, Father, with your glory and your anointing right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's stand. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. just want to say this uh, real quick before we pray. We're going to pray for Loretta Lorenz. Many of you know Loretta. She's part of our church, and she uh, fell, and, and she uh, has been having struggle with some, uh, I think, some reaction to some drugs that the doctor's been giving her. But anyway, she's in hospital in Fresno, and so we're going to pray for her. Also, I, tonight, if you're not able to make the service tonight, uh, make sure you, if possible, watch online or later come back and pick up the, the sermon. What is it? What do they get on if they need to pick it up later? YouTube? What? <laughs> is it going to be on live tonight? No, but I mean tonight's service. Is it going to be on live tonight? On Facebook tonight, okay. And uh, then, of course, you can, like Tammy said, you can get a CD if you want. The reason I'm saying that is what I want to share tonight, I know, is a word for the church. It's a, it's a prophetic word for us. And I want us to come into agreement on this. And so tonight, if you can watch live, if you can't be here, if you can be here, come and be with us. But uh, I want you to get a hold of this, what I'm going to share tonight, not because I'm preaching, but I know it's something God's wanting us to come into a place of agreement, and if we will, we'll be able to move forward some things. Amen? Praise God. Okay, Loretta, let's pray for Loretta. Maybe you're thinking of someone right now the Lord put on your heart. You pray for them too. Father, thank you for all you did in our midst today. I know we'll hear testimonies of your power and your glory in the lives of your people. Lord, you've empowered us, given us the opportunity. I pray for any person in here that will agree with me right now, I pray for, you, for them to have open doors in Jesus' name this week. I pray for divine appointments, not just with you, but with others. And I say that the spirit of boldness will rise up in them. They'll simply just minister to that person as they yield to your spirit, and you will touch lives miraculously. Now, Lord, we agree for Loretta. We agree for any other person that's in need right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your power would come upon her. God, I pray that the effects of these drugs will be neutralized in her body and that she'll be healed from uh, this fall or this situation that took place. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that the angels will be dispatched and that, God, you will stir the intercessors or you'll stir whoever you need to stir and to minister. We make a commitment to be available ourselves, Father. And so, Lord, thank you that as your people go, they go blessed, refreshed, and walking in the fullness of what you have for them. It's exciting to be alive in 2017, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. God bless you. See you later on, hopefully tonight.